阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to our. I haven't been counting, but um, about three months in of our Tai Sang Gan Ying Pian Treaties and Response and Retribution Sessions. Uh, we've been uh, you know, doing well so far, and I'm happy that um, you know, we evolve as we go. From just reading off the script to this、uh, slides that you know breaks into sections,、um, and you know into discussions,、uh, lean towards discussion kind of、uh, questions with Q and A and with stories.、Uh, we we we've been、uh, we we've gone a long way, and we can do better、uh, as we go. You know, thank you for your、um, participation. It's very important.、Um, so this. Uh, today we'll begin with section. We'll continue with section three. We're not going anywhere for another three or four months、um, because this is the longest part of the whole Tai Shan Gai Yin Pian. It tells us the transgression that we all will、uh, might uh, commit one way or another, no matter what level we are. So this、um, section three, there are part one and part two. We're now in part two, where we talk about those transgression easily committed by people. Uh, with authority, people in charge of organization, in charge of company, in charge of family, in charge of your、um, childrens. So, but this one is referring to people in in high, you know, office. But、uh, why do we say that? Because today、uh, we're going to to talk about fairness and、uh, you know, the concept of justice and not injustice, and how should we encourage people to act fairly,、uh, you know, by rewarding. Uh, the right person, not on the contrary.、Uh, on the face of the word, it says to reward injustice. In Chinese, "shang ji fei yi." You know, the whole point of rewarding system is to encourage people do good, encourage people to you know emulate what was being、uh, promoted by the、um, authority. That's the you know one of the aspect of people in charge or you know government is to. Make sure that you set up a kind of example and culture in your, you know, environment under your governance, under your, you know, either it's corporate, under either it's government, under it's a small team, your family, your group.、Uh, you want to set up that kind of right、um, kind of、um, culture、uh, that is,、uh, how to say, practiced by the members. To do so, you need to have a system of reward and punishment. Without this.、Uh, In ideal world, we don't need that.、Uh, we all we can all, you know, hold on to the five precepts,、uh, the ten virtuous deeds, and not commit any sasan ye wu jie sasan, and not commit any trespasses. But this is not the world we live in, and we have not reached that level yet. So that's why we have this system of reward and punishment, and that's why we have this session today because it talks about punishments karmically.、Um, so here we talk about. Rewarding something that is not right.、Uh, how does how does how do we know it's not right? How we how do we know it's injustice? First thing we understand reward is to encourage something that is fair. That is you know someone do something beyond their own、um, interest. That means you know you above and beyond. You know you do things that you don't have to,、um, and you know and you do it anyway at your own expense or you know out of your way to do something good. That's why we have a system of reward in Australia. We have Australian of the Year. In、uh, I think in every country we have this reward. You know, trying to say that this is a example of a citizen.、Uh, Master Ching Kong got honorary, you know,、uh, degree in universities,、uh, UQ and uh, you know,、uh, Wales in and and Indonesian、uh, Islam University because they trying to promote that his work is you know promoting peace, promoting harmony. So, this is the sort of reward that should be done、uh, if we do it right. However, in this case, 
transgression happens when, as a person in charge, you know, giving out the rewards, you need to be careful about the character of the person you're rewarding. It has to be have a good record, and not, you know, it will uh, encouraging those people who are creating a lot of um, controversies or creating a lot of, um, uh, how to say, um, unrest in the populace. This will only worsen your governance, worsen uh, you know, your team morale. Uh, it's unfair, you know, something like that, if we do that. Um, how do we say it's injustice? First thing is people who do not follow the common good rules, you know, the rules, people who, um, how to say, who uh, act according to their own desires uh, at on a whim. Uh, last week, we talked about giving out, passing out laws at a whim rather than being considerate, being meticulous, taking extra stride to make sure that it creates little harm in the transition. In this case, this is, uh, you know, we are not rewarding people like that. We should not, how to say, put them in the place, position that it can do that. So reward can also be in the form of promotion, right? So <clears throat> we should not encourage selfishness. We should not encourage something that, you know, and, uh, makes the society more unrest, more polarized. So this reward system is very important. Let's bring out a historical example. So during the Zhou Dynasty, pre, we call it Xian Qing, pre Qing unification. That means when China was like Europe, splintered into many nations. Um, there was a guy, there's a very famous um, uh, duke or king, one of the kings called uh, Jing. Uh, his name, his temple name is Jing Wengong. So for the ease of understanding, you just call him Mr. Jing. <laughs> So Mr. Jing, he has, uh, this king has a lot of um, followers along him. And one of the followers who has followed him throughout all these um, years, you know, he was being exiled due to political um, struggles and all that and went back and become king after one of the struggles. So one of the people who follow him all these years asked him, hey, my lord, not hey, that's too casual, sorry. My lord, um, you have promoted three types of um, rewards uh, in your governance but none of them included me you know you have given out three levels of reward none of them include me this must be because this must be uh, the fault on my own obviously he won't say it's your fault he'll be like it's my own fault that you will not give me any reward even though I serve you many years <clears throat> so please tell me where do I do wrong Something like that. So in, in a roundabout way, he says that, why didn't you give me reward after I follow you so, for so many years, serve you for so many years? So um, Duke Jing, uh, Jing Wen Gong, Duke Jing, J-I-N, um, that's how I reward people. First, I reward, I give the highest reward to those who correct my behavior, who attempt to um, use the teaching of sages to correct me to guide me. So even if I have, even that I'm in power, that there are still persons who are willing to risk their neck and you know, risk being uh, demoted to encourage me to be a better leader by pointing out my faults. This person deserves the highest reward from my, uh, in, in my ability. Uh, people who use their, you know, um, moral uh, examples to guide me as well. So he has a lot of advisors and a lot of them are very xianneng, very um, wise, very smart and also uh, well-versed in the teaching of sages. So they use these kind of um, teachings to help me to put out the governance. So this person received the highest reward I have, I could give. Second tier of reward, the second level, is people who help me to implement these uh, benevolent policies. Those policies that I have drafted, you know, to benefit the people under my realm, um, these people help me to implement them smoothly. So this person will receive my second level reward, mid-tier reward. Third one is those people who use their life to defend my my um, property and my my own physical body. That means my my life. You know, people who um, become my bodyguard. You know, those poor bodyguards who defend my safety um, with their lives, they receive the third level of reward. Only after I give out these three levels of reward, then 
will I then give out the leftovers or consolation prize and we jump. So the only only then I will give out the re remaining of the reward to those who only serve me, uh, but have no significance on my um, development or my governance. So <clears throat> this shows that you know Duke Jing is a person who like as a leader, right? You know, like what what is priority? What's her priority? You know, based on the system, the the, the kind of uh, policy he or she gives, right? In this case, Duke Jing, he has um, how to say put highest priority on his moral characters, on his uh, rancor, on on his characters. If you want to develop good characters, uh, only then he can be a good ruler. So he put highest reward, and on that level on that part to show the world that this guy really cares about, you know, being uh, actually a f competent and good leader. So <clears throat> after hearing this conversation, not just by the, the person who asked, but also by all the, you know, court, uh, people in the court, because this is something you can talk uh, openly. And they spread it to the whole realm, uh, you know, in, in the Jing. Uh, in the realm of Jing, which is in North China, Shanxi, the area. So basically, um, <clears throat> he, um, you know, everyone was so consolated, consoled, consoled after hearing their leaders um, taking really good care. I mean, taking high priorities on moral cultivations. That means being a decent, a really competent leader. So there we go. Why? Be, um, that's why he can be one of the top five. Chun Chu Wu Ba, so top five um, sounds like a you know boxing match, but it's not. But yeah, some, something like that. So he's top one of the top five in the spring and autumn period of China. Think of right now, or think of World War One. I, I mean, right now, like U.S. kind of feeling. So his country is like the U.S. among the international communities, and it's not it's not easy to get that level because everyone is so competent, everyone is so smart. And he can get to the top. Why? Not not just by military power, right? The kingdom of Chu has a lot of strong military, but he's still not respected by the international communities. The, uh, the kingdom of Jing is uh, considered as the central Zhongyuan, uh, central, uh, very close to the central, we call it the middle kingdom concept. So, hence. The point is, Using his kind of logic and implement that kind of governance in your own company, in your own government, in your own family. Um, obviously, the bigger, the more complicated it is. Uh, that's what makes his country strong. Because his reward reaches the right person. He rewards the just, rewards the people who are virtuous, benevolent. Um, and with this kind of reward, the whole thing passed down to the whole to every single people, every single member of the system. Why? Because every country, if the, if you, if you have this per kind of person at on the top, and implement this kind of fairness uh, in in the reward and punishments, then every single promotions, every single um, salary increase, every single um, grain tax, there will be later margin of error. Um, the standard is correct, Sangzhen, because it's it's already um how to say. On top of that, they already have the right priorities. They get their priorities right. Hence, when you pass it down, everyone will get the right ideas eventually. Um, and so this will close the gap for those people who just want to lick the boots or who just trying to fish around, we call it more you, fish around their, the system. Uh, very little chance for them to move up. Hence, they they can't reach the top. If you want to reach the top, you have to be seriously competent you have to be for real you know like honest in the sense that you know you have to be true to yourself you cannot be uh, a fake you cannot um, fish around trying to lick the boots of another person above you uh, trying to fish some sort of rewards and promotion obviously you know I, we try to do that in uh, every single country but how do we do that this is this is the way the kind of reward and punishment and encouraging the right kind of uh, behavior will only help your nations or your countries or your 
you know, your societies to um, be constructive, you know, to to be, to go towards a constructive path instead of destructive, polarized path. Because everyone will encourage each other, which I will mention on the next pair of words because this one is it's related to one another. Second one is to punish the innocent. So on the face value, why, why does that warrant a, a, a word in this uh, important text? You know, of course we don't want to punish the innocent. Who wants to punish the innocent, right? Do I think I want to punish the innocent when I become a judge or court magistrate? Or do I want to punish the innocent party when I'm becoming a corpse or a teacher in a group? Of course not. I want to find out who is the real perpetrator and celebrate right punishment. That's common sense, isn't it? So why, why was it there? Right. So over here, <clears throat> it's actually not just about intention. It's also something called unintention. Negligence. Things happen to people who are even very, they are, they are saying here that people who are really serious about their job will do their best, still have margins of error, especially in regards to this kind of, you know, cases that involves people and property. Let alone that, I mean, let alone people who actually fish around in their jobs. That means they don't take their job seriously. And the negligence is even worse and might cost people life if there is, there's a death penalty. So that's the whole point of this, I think. So if we read it from a face and then we kind of think about the logic behind it, then we understand. The point of punishment is to deter, is to, how to say, it's not to fulfill, uh, 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 it's not to say, oh, serve you right or have, have fun. I mean, doing that, it should not be like that. It should be just, it should be one of those lowest kind of, um, how to say, how to say you, you, you have no choice but to use that kind of forced to, to, to stop that person from committing harms. It has to come out from that logic, right? So punishment itself is unauspicious, it is not a good thing. All right. No one says that uh, you, know, you should punish the person. The whole point of punishment is after all the deliberations, sayings, and all the teachings, still not listening, right? Then we start uh, light punishments, trying to stop that person from acting the behavior that's harmful to themselves and the society, and then get heavier as they get more rampant. Obviously, you know, this is a very deep uh, questions we can talk about later. Um, I will I will welcome a lot of um, perspective because this is what we hear. Well, so <clears throat> punishment is not auspicious. It's not it's not a good thing. All right. So hence, using that logic, we should understand that punishment always must be used with uh, high restraint, um, and it has to fit the crime. All right, and it has to be committed in a way that is, it has to be um, how to say passed on. Uh, to the perpetrator from a point of view of um, if this person was not on that path, on the wrong path, we could have used him for a better use in the society, you know, who could be a more productive member of society or could have been one of the best uh, in, in whatever field he might excel in. Like say a youth who has committed a murder in a very young age of 17, 16. And obviously it would be easier for us to think in that way if that's a young person. So does the old person, right? If he could have, um, if he does not have this condition, you know, cause, condition, effect, right, in Yuan Guo, that push him towards that direction, he could have been, uh, have at least have a secure life with a good family, children, and their parents don't have to worry about it. Always have to think from that human perspective before we pass on to punishment, no matter where you are. So it has to come out from the point of, um, from a point of view of uh, compassion, even when the punishment is given. That's how Bodhisattva uh, Guan Yin do it as well. When he appears as the, if you go to San Sisini and the um, Tricini ceremony, there were times there where they set up um, the statue of Bodhisattva Guan Yin, which depart from the original look, which is very compassion um, look, into a look of very uh, fierce um, ghost, Gui Wang. I always remind myself like compassion has two faces. You know, it does not compassion does not mean coddling you all the time. Compassion means that 
even using a stick to knock you to wake you up before you got you got um, burned inside a burning house is also compassion or slap you to wake you up before you got uh, how to say drowned in a in a car or something like that it's like <laughs> oh, um, compassion uh, if used without restraint uh, without wisdom uh, yes. it will it harm. will cause a lot of harm than good yeah. uh, being too expedient that means you know like it's fine it's fine will um, create people uh, of low moral character which means your character is not good uh, yeah. not reliable yeah. so like uh, I, Maggie uh, trying to relay is that this kind of um, ooh, restraint is important so yeah. This kind of logic can be applied in punishment as well. What's the point of punishment? Is it just to enjoy your sadistic pleasure? No. Obviously, no. The point of punishment is just to make sure that you know the person does not want to do it again. If it fails to achieve that, obviously the punishment is not working the way it's intended. Look at the incarceration rates in everywhere in the world. Uh, US has a lot of statistic on that. That's why we keep saying US, but everywhere in the world, you know, you understand that as well. Um, does it help? to stop the crime or does it make the crime even more all right but the point is the root is the education is is the thing right uh the the, the community you know the sense of community the society is this is more important than just having police holding that baton holding that clock holding that um taser to tase people and physically stop them when you read the uh, story of duke of jean it also talk about Feel free to chip in, guys, if, if there's any few point that really, you know, really, really echoes with you. Yeah. Hi, how? So not rewarding the behavior that will, in, how to say, cause the, the, the whole organization, you know, to um, be unrest and that is wrong. So basically, the, what Alex uh, trying to show is that um, this is a good example. Thank you for the real life example. I can't even think that's of okay. it. Uh, it's... That's what I say. You guys have a real life experience, and if we go into this session, it will be much more enjoyable, um, or much more inspiring because it's actually happening in, near us. Uh, punish in this sense, like you know, doesn't have to be like cane or anything, but punishment in in just now we say that like, is just simply rejecting, you know, what is not free, fair, and reasonable. Um, yeah, it's good. So. Um, Everything has its own, uh, you know, uh, rules and, and, and standards. If we um, do it at a whim instead of, you know, following uh, what is right uh, for the you know, organization or for the, for the law, uh, for the common good, then it's obviously going to be um, causing a lot of problem if we allow that as an authority. So she's in charge of the class and she think of the class and she think that, you know, She's not going through the proper channels to say of their religious reasons. Maybe just a whim from the children. She take it too seriously and become, oh, my baby boy says no. He's not, he does not want to come. And it caused uh, this. And then at the, you know, she's not backing down. The supervisor does not happy. But at the end of the day, you know, he, he follows the rules. And yeah. So it's not easy to be the person who say no. But if we say yes, there will be a lot more trouble afterwards. Tell Lan Hao Ren in the Chinese words. I keep saying, yes, man, it's not, yeah, it's not the way to do it. So people who commit a crime also needs, you know, it's also at fault. But the problem is as a society, we, the kid don't just commit crime on their own. <laughs> or they, even they commit crime, it's easily stopped when you give them a right kind of uh, expectation from the society or the right uh, standards uh, by the society. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, this happens. Uh, just like fire, right? You need to stop when it's, it's in the butt, it, when it's a small sparks. You can't stop it when it becomes, you know, bushfire. It's too late. So, yeah, I'm not going to stay too long on this one because we already hit quite a bit of point. Um, but, um, Let's bring out, let's push this point home, okay? By showing an example of a person who actually try their best to avoid um, punishment that is unfair. But because of, you know, negligence, he ended up 
committing it anyway. And what's the karma of that? So there's a judge in ancient China. He's called Li Guizhong. He's Mr. Li, Judge Li. So he was, um, you know, been doing this um, court cases, this, uh, this, this kind of career for a long time. One day when he, uh, you know, went out for business, uh, you know, he, he, he go out, he travel uh, far away from his home for, uh, for the job. He crossed a bridge and he saw 10 person shouting, just 10 person with their hair down, uh, yelling, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. I was being, uh, how to say, unfairly punished, by, uh, unfairly passed on, uh, unfairly killed uh, by wrong punishments. And these persons are approaching him in a encirclement, you know, encircle him and approach him closer and closer. This time, Mr. Lee felt very, very scared. So he ran back home. Once he went back home, he immediately bring his children in front of him and, uh, and, and, and warn them, you know, you are studying right now, right? And after you study, you will become appointed into a government position. And more likely, you will be the judge. So please don't take the job that concerns the punishments of the people. You know, whatever job, whatever position you're in, just don't be a judge. Why? <laughs> because when I was a judge, even though I do not bright, except bright, so I'm not corrupted in, a, in this sense, and I'm a very careful person, and I'm very fearful of passing wrong judgment. Right, I but, but his, there's one thing he did that is not quite right. I follow precedents. I only follow precedents, no matter no matter the context. I follow the precedents. Oh, from the face surface value, this kind of person commit this crime. So we're gonna follow whatever was done in the past. Do the same to him. Didn't understand the motive. Didn't understand the actual context. So his problem is. So I always follow the precedent without applying critical thinking or without applying context. Hence, causing a lot of innocent lives, death by the swords or by hanging. Or oh, I, don't, I don't think China has hanging. It's just lopped your head off. Yep, death by the swords. Uh, where uh, very innocent, many innocent lives being killed because of this wrong punishment. Today, no matter how much I repent, it's too late. Very soon after, he passed away. So a person like him, who is actually quite, you know, straight, um, quite serious on his job, you know, would commit this kind of crime. I mean, commit this kind of mistakes by punishing the innocent, let alone people who does not, just now, like, like I mentioned, who fish around the jobs, who does not actually uh, take their task seriously. Obviously, over here, I like that one word, Chang Chang Ying Xun Yi Zhao Wang Lie Lai Pan Jie. It's very important to have wisdom if you're in a business of handling uh, people's life, um, especially in terms of life and death judgment. Obviously, in modern times, you won't have it. But still, you know, wisdom is important. Wisdom means when to, when to do, when not to do, when to use, when not to use, when to apply exception. Kaiser Zi Fan, even in our precepts, we also cannot be like, just because Buddha say that, that's, what, that's why we need to hug the word tightly. That's not what Buddha is trying to mean, like the spirit of the law and the letter of the law, guys. Like there are times when you need to open, when there are times you need to hold it, when there are times you need to, um, uh, how does it, kai zhe zi fan, basically, yeah. There are exceptions like medicines, right? Alcohol as medicines, right? I'm using this example because that's what I'm familiar with. Alcohol as medicine is fine, all right? Or as a Mahayana Buddhist, when you go out, actually, you know, receiving invitation from people who actually have no idea about your religion, who sincerely wants to say thank you to you or for your help and accidentally giving you a dish of meat or wine by accident, and they are really sincere, they are not joking, then that's when you need to think on their behalf, you know, to accept their heart. Right. And then afterwards they understand that you're actually vegetarian. They were like, okay, sorry, next time, no more. 
something like that. You know, it, it takes time to, to, to get better at this. So, yeah. Last two. I think we still have 15 minutes. Um, well, this is quite related. Silent Shui Chai, you know, killing to seize property. Um, killing people in order to get their money. So, you know, these are not usually, like, obvious one would be the robbers. No. But there are also people like uh, corrupted officials, corrupted lawyers, even the family members. Hey, have you guys heard insurance fraud? <laughs> yeah, insurance fraud. So because of the, the you know, seduction of money and fame, money, not fame, money, you know, by trust and all that, people willing to go that far to do it to their loved ones or you know, to the clients who have confidence in them. So um, in order to gain people's money uh, in an unlawful way, an unrighteous way, you know, for the government officials, they might use punishments. They may use um, means of coercion, intimidations, fear uh, to coerce, shake up, shake down the money uh, out of you. That happens, you know. Um, especially when you're in uh, prison, you're at the mercy of the wardens, mercy of the uh, this kind of um, these people in part in charge. Remember, this is about transgression easily committed by people in authority. So very easily, you know, because your your life is in their hands. Obviously, you know, you committed crimes or wrongfully accused of. And 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 a lot of times, uh, we don't have to go ancient, you know, just go like a few decades ago or even now. You know, um, not every country have that law that protects the prison very well, prisoners very well. Um, you know, sometimes they can, for political reasons, sometimes for money reasons, in this case it's money reasons, they would just, you know, write you off as death by, you know, gang fighting or accidents. And then you just die without knowing why. And suddenly your money also disappears. Deeds gone. Stuff like that. Also, um, people who are in power, in wealth, position of great wealth, wealthy people, uh, people who owe them the money, you know, that people, he might, you know, loan out personal loan or something to many people around them, family, friends. Uh, they are, their life is fine, you know, they don't need the money. And sometimes, you know, um, in order to um, get their money back, even the other, per other person is in deep troubles, financial troubles, like in a, in a way that they can't even leave a normal house or they don't have even even have a shelter. They still forced um how to say this kind of uh person to pay back the money. On top of that they add all the interest rates uh to make it harder for them to survive. So this this kind of thing is uh called cruelty. Alright even though you know on paper you should give you should pay the debt. Alright. However if they don't have the money what are you going? What are you going to do, All right? And and from this example, we kind of understand killing does not necessarily like directly murdering them, but maybe pushing them to that edge, to that um, extremes. Um, they either suicide or either you know commit crimes in order to uh, get back to you, something like that. Um, so. So this is uh, against the principle of compassions. Um, Yong Yi Wei Le Tan Chai Yip, doctors, right? Patients are in patients' life in your hands, all right. If we want to receive, I I heard there's a very famous word, Hong Bao, the rate packets, extra rate packets, into your pockets, so that you can prioritize on these patients more than the others instead of a proper system that prioritize actual people in emergencies. We loop, we find a loop around a place using the position of power or because you are an expert, right? You have the skill to save people's lives. So 
there's this culture of people stuffing the rate packets, which is the money, bribing you to prioritize their, their patients ahead of what is proper, properly aligned in, in the queue. So this is also one way of killing to seize property. You know, this can be used in everywhere, especially people in, in, in charge uh, in that um, advantage position. All this can be grouped up in one motive, greed for money. Uh, and because of this motive, they might do something that directly or indirectly killed the person. Uh, and this person, remember the karma of committing this is Li Gui. So a very um, fierce ghost will haunt you until the very end of your life. And then they will sort in the ming. They will take your life. Um, and those money will become, you know, like water vapor will dissipate. So let's go for a story in ancient times because I don't have a real life example or maybe I do, but I forgot. So in the Changjiang, in one of the rivers in China, um, there is a famous uh, ship, how to say, uh, ferryman. His name is, uh, I don't know how to read that word. Just call him ferryman. When he, when he rides the waves, um, there is one very rich merchant uh, on board his ferry. And he saw that he's very rich, maybe by his attire, you know, in the ancient times, if you, you only can wear certain attire on a certain class. So it's very easy to spot who is who. So this person must be a rich guy. And then he on board his ferry, paying for his fare, trying to go across the other side of the rivers. This guy, this ferryman, you know, uh, take this opportunity to kill him by pushing him down to the water when the waves are very fierce. Um, and whatever he left behind, the luggage, he take it as his own, stealing, basically. So using these uh, ill-gotten gains, he became a wealthy man. Um, and he lives on the other province. Obviously, he don't want to be caught. I don't know what they call Wei Yang. It's a very um, it's one of the province in China. So not long not long after he has a son. When this son grown up, does not know why this son really hates his father. You know, this very man become a wealthy man. He has a son, and this son throughout these years, he always have the sense of hate to his father. You know, always treat him like his enemy. And this ferryman is very angry. So he went to the temple and asked the, the, the spirits, like, you know, why? Why this happened to me? And this um, people who, you know, um, these spirits, he went on process one of the, you need, remember what you did many years ago, that river on that ferry? When the wind's blowing high, he did something to someone, all right? That's 20 years ago. Because of that greed, ask yourself why do you have this kind of condition at the moment? So when he heard that 20 years ago, uh, he actually committed a crime of killing a rich merchant to, in order to, to um, call the, in order to, um, how to say, tun, or I don't know how to say in Chinese, I can't say swallow, in order to take his money. Um, he murdered a person, and that was happening 20 years ago. His son is 20 years old. Uh, so this son is trying to uh, seek revenge on him. So he was very scared because he immediately aware of it, and 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 he ran he ran away from the house, you know. But in the end of the day, he still died. They didn't explain why, how he he died, but I'm pretty sure it's not a good death. Um, another case is a soldier being a guard of a of a courthouse, basically Yaman. So in one of the morning, he went out, you know, patrolling outside the wild, saw a, a person uh, bringing a, you know, a hefty lot of um, goods, money, uh, valuables. So he did not identify that person as the police or guards. He thought he's one of those um, bandits who has the swords because he carries weapons. 
And obviously, you know, instinct, you know, kicks in. He's hiding in the grass, trying to avoid this person with the weapons. So this person, you know, this guard's also not not aware uh, what, of what happened. He only saw that person hiding in the bush. He thought he's trying to ambush him or something. So p- both persons don't understand what's happening. They're all trying to kick in. Their, their in- instinct kicks in and try to protect themselves. <laughs> So he, he fears that he might be bandits or he might be, or he didn't even see a human. He, he thought there's some animals like uh, leopards or lions. So he draw his sword and stab the grass. And that guy died just like that. So unfortunately. So when he, when he realized that it's a person that he stabs, he felt um, shocked, obviously, because he don't, he has no intention to kill. In, remember this case, he has no intention to kill. Previous one is intention to kill. And we talk about karma has a lot of levels. One is heavier, one is lighter. All right? In this case, no intention, but he killed. So knowing that he has done such a mistake, he did not just report himself to the, that's the right thing, right? But he didn't. He kind of do something that is wrong. He take his possession which is valuable, and leave his corpse in the blue grasses. So just leave his leave his corpse uh, leave his corpse rotting in the grasses. So this thing was not found by other people. So of course, having the new valuables, you're rich. He had a wife, and his wife have a daughter. And you know, you one day he work as usual. You know, outside the courthouse. Suddenly he. Um, So he saw that guy that he killed, the ghost apparition, went into a neighbor's house. And then not long after, that neighbor's uh, neighbor's um, wife has a baby coming out. So he immediately aware that this, this, this is the guy I killed by accident. Now he's reborn as a human. But he, and he's living next door. <laughs> so what's going to happen is... Um, he understand, you know, right? He understand. He's aware. And so what he did, he treat these neighbors very good. Everything, every good stuff he gives to him. So he still feel guilty, right? Because in the very beginning, he didn't want to kill him. But he didn't do the right thing either. So, you know, he treat this um, carpenter very nice. This neighbor is working as a carpenter, Pi Jiang. So this uh, carpenter has a son and, you know, he understand. He treat him very well. Also treat the son very well kind of like feeling sorry for killing you accidentally. Um, and when his own daughter grown up, he already promised a daughter, his daughter well, in old days, right? Arranged marriage. Promised his daughter to the neighbor's son. So my daughter will be your wife when they uh, come of age. Coming of age. The um, neighbors are very happy uh, and say that you must be very, you must be filial to your uh, father-in-law the person who murdered you by accident last life, by the way. We know that you don't know, okay? So you must be very filial to your father-in-law, just like you to me, your own father. So when summer, right, and then this goes on, reaching a summer, I don't know which summer, uh, the weather is very hot, and this man, this um, guard, you know, was drunk, and he slept on the, on the, on the, on the bed. And he keeps sweating non-stop. What happened? Next to his bed is the son of the neighbor, his future son-in-law, standing there waiting. And then, I don't know why, he just un- he just do that. He just take a knife, slowly scrape away the sweat from his body. So he didn't try to stab him, but he used the knife. I don't know why, right? S- scraped the sweat off his body. Not using towel, but using knife. So this um, guard, because he was drunk, he's not aware. So he felt like something's on his body. Uh, something's moving on his body. So he used his hand to slap it. And it's a knife that he slapped. And that knife has, you know, pierced through his stomach. However, this time he's not dead. So immediately he yelled to his um, 
yelled to his family, telling them what actually happened in the past life. All right. Of course, he fulfilled his promise. Um, when they come of age, uh, married his daughter off to this uh, son of the neighbors, uh, and give everything, all his wealth, back to the sons of the neighbor, the person he killed. So, in a sense, he paid back already with a stab in his stomach. So, kind of fair, in a sense. So, in the end of the day, it's fair. Um, and he's he's quite how to say he he did the wrong thing, but uh, he's still smart enough not to, not to be you know very bad. You know he he knows like mm. I, I did something wrong. <laughs> I need to fix it. Wang Yang Pu Lao Wei Si Wei Wan. That's a very important thing. Yeah, and he also he's not intentional. He didn't do it because he's hating or he he really uh, want. To get something from him, he actually do it because he literally is trying to defend himself. So this mm. is kind of like an intentional killing. It also tells us that karma has a different levels. As mm. long as we are aware and always cleanse it, you know, in our case, Amitofo, that's more than enough, and understand why, understand the reasons, then you know it can be resolved uh, if you're sincere. If you're not sincere, nothing works. No matter how much Amitofo you chant, it's just for show. So, yeah. So this is it. I'm not going too far into this. Uh, we'll leave this section uh, next week, uh, next fortnight. Um, before killing does not have to be actual killing. Yes, it can like you know causing people in 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 the everyday context. It can be say causing people um, harm mentally, or killing themselves, or what well, that's a bit serious, or you know uh, causing them a lot of trouble. Uh, in or in order to get benefit from them, something like that. A mi to fo 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 a mi to fo. A mi to fo a mi to fo. May the merits and virtues accrue from this uh, discussion. Uh, repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those on the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this aspire by the body mind together. We vow and be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo. Thank you very much. <laughs>